In this video, you will learn how to find the rate of change from a table and from a graph. The rate of change describes how one quantity changes in relation to another quantity. It is expressed as a unit rate. When finding the slope of real-world situations, it is referred to as rate of change. The rate of change means the same as slope. To find the rate of change, you find the change in y over the change in x. Example number one. The table shows the amount of money a booster club made washing cars for a fundraiser. Use the table to find the rate of change. So I need to find the change in y over the change in x. In order to do that, I need to subtract the y values to find the change, then subtract the x values to find the change. I'm going to write my answer as a fraction with y as a numerator and x as a denominator. So I'm going to look at my table, and what I'm going to do is insert parentheses and a comma to separate my numbers so I can make my numbers ordered pairs. So the left column are all my x values. The right column are all my y values. Now to find the rate of change, it's a change in y over the change in x. So we're going to begin with our y's. So I'm going to go ahead and number my ordered pairs. This is the first one. This is the second one. So I'm going to start with my y's and I'm going to start with the second one. So the second y is 80. I'm going to subtract the first one, which is 40. Now my x values. So I'm going to take the second x, which is 10, and I'm going to subtract the first x, which is 5. 80 take away 40 gives me 40, and 10 take away 5 gives me 5. So 40 divided by 5 gives me 8. I'm going to do this again because I want to make sure I did this correctly. So remember, always use the x and y value from the same ordered pair in the same direction. Since I started with the y value in the second ordered pair first, I had to start with the x value in the second ordered pair. So I'm going to number these again. So this is the first one. This is the second one. We find the rate of change by the change in y over the change in x. So the second y is 160 minus the first y, which is 120, all over the second x, which is 20, minus the first x, which is 15. So 160 minus 120 gives me 40, and then 20 minus 15 gives me 5. So 40 divided by 5 will give me 8. That means that my rate of change for this table equals 8. We can't forget that the rate of change is expressed as a unit rate. So that means it's $8 per car. Example number two. The table shows the relationship between the number of seconds, y, it takes to hear the thunder after a lightning strike, and the distance in miles, x, you are from the lightning. Use the table to find the rate of change. So remember, the rate of change is the change in y over the change in x. So we're going to use a different method here. First, we're going to label our rows, the distance in x, are all of our x values. The seconds in y are all of our y values. So we're going to use the caret method. I want to see how many I'm increasing or decreasing by. So we're going to start with our x values first. From 0 to 1, I'm adding 1. From 1 to 2, I'm adding 1. From 2 to 3, I'm adding 1. From 3 to 4, I'm adding 1. From 4 to 5, I'm adding 1. So the change in x 
equals one. Now my y values, from zero to five, I'm adding five. From five to 10, I'm adding five. From 10 to 15, I'm adding five. From 15 to 20, I'm adding five. And from 20 to 25, I'm adding five. So my change in y equals five. So now I'm gonna go ahead and find the rate of change. We said it's the change in y over the change in x. And we said our change in y was five and our change in x was one. So that means five divided by one equals five. So that would be five seconds per mile. And that would be my rate of change. Example number three. The graph represents the distance traveled while driving on a highway. Use the graph to find the rate of change in miles per hour. So remember, our rate of change is the same thing as slope. And our slope is rise over run, which is the same thing as our change in y over our change in x. So I'm going to start by taking two points. I'm going to take the first point, which is 1, 60, and the second point, which is 2, 120. So I'm going to start with my rise, which is my change in y. Now I notice that on my y values, I'm going up by 20. So each time I jump, I'm going to go up by 20. So I'm going to start with the bottom point and go up. So I'm going to go 20, 40, 60. So that would be my change in y, which is 60. Now my change in x, I notice that I'm going up by half each time I jump. So I'm going to begin where I left off. So that would be half. That would be 1. So my change in x would be 1. That means 60 divided by 1 gives me 60. And that would be miles per hour. So my rate of change is 60 miles per hour. Example number four, find the rate of change for the graph shown. So remember, the rate of change is the same thing as slope, which is my rise over my run. And that's the same thing as a change in y over the change in x. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at the graph. I'm going to pick two points from the graph. It doesn't matter which two points. I'm going to pick 2, 18 and 3, 27. So when I look at the graph and I look at the y values, it looks like I'm going up by 3. So I'm not going up by 1, I'm going up by 3 each time. And on my x values, it looks like I'm going up by half each time I move. So I'm going to start with my y values first. So each time I jump, I'm jumping by 3. So 3, 6, 9. So my change in y is going to be 9. Now my change in x. So each time I move to the right, I'm only moving half each time I jump. So I'm going to start where I left off. So that's half, 1. So my change in x equals 1. So 9 divided by 1 is 9. That means that it costs $9 per shirt. And that is the rate of change for this graph. And that's how you find the rate of change.